Um, assign three guards to patrol routes. Okay, so just before we carry on with that, let's get this last security procedure in place. So, patrol routes. Let's just put this on pause a second. Now you can see here, it's just giving me a nice whiteout of the prison. You can see the current guard locations. You can assign guards to particular areas. So, for example, um, I can have these are cell blocks so let's put one guard here one guard here and because this is a little bit of a bigger area we'll do two guards down here um, we'll assign at least two guards to the canteen one to the kitchen now in fact no we don't need any in the kitchen at the moment because we haven't we can research later on to have some of our uh, prison inmates work in the kitchen and then we'll move them to the kitchen if need be but we don't need one right there for now um, we'll keep one in parole um, down here Arguably, in real life, again, this is where you're going to draw the comparison. If you find out that you're not going to be given parole, you're going to have a bit of an argument with the people that are there to tell you that. So having a couple of people in there, and then again, the same in visitation, in case there's any problems, it's always handy to have. Um, we'll have... I think we'll be able to cover the rest with... Oh, well, no, we'll put a couple in the yard. We'll put three in the yard as well. Right, now, roots. Um, we will assign a route in here of going through down here, along here, along here, and we'll have to include this cell down here. Now, whenever you click it assigns a guard, if you just literally right click on them, it just gets rid of that guard. So at the moment that is a route but has no guards assigned to it. Um, here we go. So that's all I wanted for now. I have one guard and that is the route that he's walking. It walks next to all the cells, so it keeps an eye on all the people up here. And it also walks through the kitchen and the canteen, so it keeps an eye on people up here. So we will do the same down here. These are the solitary confinement cells, so we'll have one guard walk along the solitary confinement cells. And then walking along next to the normal cells. And walking along next to these cells. And we'll have him just come along through the common room, just keep an eye on it. And we'll get him to poke his head into visitation as well. So we only want one guard walking that route as well. Um, we'll have one guard just going backwards and forwards down here along the parole and chapel. Uh, we don't need anyone in the staff room because that's all for staff. Um, in fact, we'll probably make this one a little bit longer. And we'll have a second guy just so that we have um, the holding cells looked into every now and then as well. Um, you could arguably have someone check the utilities, but I don't really think it warrants it for now because it is a separate room. Uh, later on, I'll put CCTV in there anyway, so it will uh, be watched. Uh, I can assign people later on for this one once I need it, um, depending on what I do with it. So let's turn that off. Um, we have one, two, three guards at the moment assigned. Grey means they're currently not assigned. Well, they're assigned, but no one is fulfilling it. So as you can see, I need more guards. So let's hire a couple more guards. Has that fulfilled it now? That has now fulfilled it. So there we go. We have guards assigned to specific rooms. And we have three guards on specific patrols. That means that we are... We currently don't have any guards roaming, however, so I might get another guard just for roaming. That's fine. Um, the roaming guards are useful for if you need someone to be searched or you need a door open somewhere. At the moment, for example, if a door needs to be open in this block, so for example these jail cells, it will be one of the prisoner, one of the guards here that will go and open the door. However, a door, you know, for example, if I put a prison door here. There's no one assigned to this area. So one of the other prison guards will have to come from somewhere across the prison and come and open the door. Now the roaming guards are the people that are likely to do that. So the roaming guards will come out and meet the new prisoners when they arrive. Uh, they'll search cell blocks whenever things need searching. Um, yeah, they're just handy for roaming around. Now, arguably having 16 guards and 25 prisoners isn't a great ratio, but at the moment I'm gonna probably extend a few of these routes and change a few of the deployments to utilize the guards that we have. Um, in an ideal prison, you can get away with four guards, sorry, four inmates to every one guard. Uh, at the moment, it's almost one for one. So yeah, I, I, as I say, I'll redeploy it uh, later once I've got these prison cells planned out. So let's finish the planning up here. 
uh, objects. So we'll just assume that this is going to be the one and it's going to be duplicated all the way along here. So we'll just do the walls for now. Wall, wall. So this just allows us to plan where the break is going to be. So that's annoying because at the moment that is a perfect cell block um, in terms of its layout. How the hell is a guy got over here? What? That makes no sense. How's the prisoner got up here? Get back over here. I have no idea how he's got over there. How bizarre! He can't go anywhere because this is now fully enclosed in. But I'd love to know how he got up there. Um, I think I might need to get a security guard to escort him back. I have no idea how he's got up there. This is completely fenced off. Oh, another prisoner that's just gone through where there's a staff door. Hmm. Naughty prisoners. Right, okay, anyway. Because he would have had to come out of the prison to get there. That's so strange. Anyway, let's carry on for now. Um, so, at the moment, I'm going to have to sacrifice a cell block in order for them to come out this way. Um, it's not going to be the end of the world, really. I would have ideally liked for them to be able to come straight through here. It all depends on what I put in here, really. If I do a canteen, then I'd like them to have quick access. In fact, yeah, I'm going to have to... I'll, separate, I'll sacrifice one cell for the sake of it. I'll be able to do a full set of cells down the bottom. So, at least there's that. One cell's not going to be the end of the world. Um, I'm going to leave solitary down here. At the moment, I think the solitary confinement is big enough for the prison, even with the addition of the cells here. Um, let's have a look at how the layout's going to look over here. So, we want 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Walls. Okay, so what's going to be the best one here? Uh, we could go for another type of pattern, which is actual in cell rows, um, which is a series of lines like this. So hang on, let's think about this. Uh, two, and then a row again. And two, is that long enough? I don't think that's long enough. I think that's now long enough. It also means that we can put access routes through here, for example. Um, in fact, I could make it this cell. No, let's try and keep it middle. So. We'll do this cell here, for example, as the walkthrough. Um, so now we've got a path into here, and we've got a path up here. We've got another fight going on. What's going on down here? Oh, it's out in the yard. Got injured. There we go. He's been dealt with. Three mem three officers out in the yard, and they still have decide to have a fight, eh? How am I getting prisoners up here? This makes no sense. Okay, let's replace these with jail doors, shall we? So let's get these guys back down here. I have no idea how these guys are getting up through these doors. Uh, we will replace these doors. Let's dismantle them. We'll put full-on jail doors. So we're going to have to assign a guard up here, but 
we'll worry about that once we finish doing these layouts. So let's carry on with the planning here. So we'll do back-to-back -back cells here. Um, the thing is, I like doing cells like this because you can include a window. And a window is one of part of the basic requirements for happiness. So really, I could start adding windows into all these rooms down here. Uh, and it would increase their happiness. Now, if I start doing cells on the inside, so like cell blocks along here, they have no access, access outside, so the cell quality goes down. Um, so I could make this one for naughty prisoners, um, but you know we'll we'll deal with that. That's going to be this cell block layout. We'll address that in different ways. We might increase the quality of the cell by putting extra things in these cells, for example. Um, you know, if you add a TV, for example, it makes up for some of the quality of the room. Um, planning objects so I need two four sorry I keep counting this two four six eight ten two four six eight ten two four six eight ten so you need to go one more long there we go Ish, bosh. Um, go along here along here along here uh, come along here so we're going to have to shuffle this one up a little bit. That's fine. And put a cell here. So we'll make it a break here, and we'll keep the break here as well. So we will come along here. And we'll make that one cell. We'll make that one cell. There we go. So we need to adjust the shape here a little bit, um, because this is not going to work otherwise. So we either make this a dormitory, Otherwise, this happens. There we go. So we we are we need to go closer to the edge here, realistically, if we want to make this work. Uh, three cells and three cells might work a little bit better. It's like a little bit more mirrored. Uh, it also means that I can put something here if I want, if I don't want to do cells. Um, so let's close this up a little bit. It gives us a little bit more buffer to the fence anyway, which I'm fine with. Uh, so there we go. I might make this a little bit of an odd shape, actually, because I could put a utilities room in here. Let's see how we look up here, anyway, because uh, I think we're going to be struggling for space up here, realistically. Um, so we keep two... P so just to visualise it a little bit better. So pathways are along here, which lets us go into here, and pathways will be coming... Let's put these quickly put these doors in. So inmates don't randomly start appearing up top again. Um so pathways, planning, pathways. So that will go into this yard. All the way from up here. And then if they want to go for food, they'll come into this area here. And same with these guys, if they want food. They're going to come in through this way here. Okay. So these guys up here. Let's change these around a little bit. Would be coming along here. So I can either make an opening here. Which I think is probably going to be the better option. So really, I'm going to make this huge area here the new canteen. This is going to be the new area where they're all going to eat. Uh, I could essentially make this area up here the area that they cook. Or that's a little bit small. I don't know. I'll have a look when I come to plan the layout. What I might do is kind of make it kind of this sort of area. I think uh, an area like that's going to be a little bit more reasonable. Um, that way I can plan out a few enhancers in this area if I like. Uh, but let's finish off these cell blocks, shall we? So. Um, objects need to go five long, so one, two, three, four, five long. Wall here, wall down here. 
So I could make this area a little bit shorter if I want. Um, I think making it two blocks shorter might be a little bit better. Um, or I could just make it longer, really, I guess. Let's finish this. Uh, so, walls along here. Let's try and get an idea of numbers as well. Will probably be helpful. Just the shape a little bit. Try and keep it as uniform as possible. So wall along here. Wall along here. And a T-shaped wall here. Uh, wall along here. Wall along here. T-shape here. Wall here. And another one here. And... Right, so this is now giving me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 down the bottom and 9 across the top, so 19 there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 19 and 24 cells equally. So that is a nice couple of blocks. It's going to take us well above our 50 requirement and on our way to our next. So that's going to work out quite nicely because if I do make this, in fact, yeah, I'm going to make this a huge eating area because what I can do then, I will bring the wall up to here because that way, if I then decide to put the next cell block in up here, they can all still carry on eating up here. Or alternatively, if I do it here and then make an entrance here. So that way, these guys can come out of and into here to eat. These guys can come out of here and up here to eat. And these guys can come down here. So they all come in from three different directions, so they don't all cluster up. Um, but it does mean that if I put another cell block up here, realistically, I should probably save this area to be a second yard. Because trying to get the guys on up here to walk all the way down, down here, by the time it actually gets to uh, being yard time, they're going to spend most of their time walking and not actually get to the yard, so their um, happiness is going to go down. So, I'm going to make, say, half of the, this. This is definitely going to be the eating area. Um, we will probably make the wall just one more offset, so we'll go like that. So, this entire area, I'd say, is going to be the new eating area. This area up here, I'd... I'm going to make the cooking area. I'll adjust it depending on... In fact, I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to adjust it depending on uh, the ratio of cookers, fridges, and tables. Um, so let's bring this, this size down a little bit so that we're more in line with uh, the cells so we don't end up with just wasted space. At the end of the day, we're trying to want to utilize space as best as we can. Um, so, for example, here... We can't keep our two buffer. If we add another cell here, we, we literally, you know, a tiny bit of land, a fence, and then the road where they can escape from. So that's not realistic. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, I could move the whole thing across a little bit if I wanted to. There's no reason why I couldn't do that. Um, but I don't. I'm quite happy with the way that it's laying out at the moment. So we'll just leave it the way it is for the time being. Um, we'll drop this down the two blocks, so walls here at the moment, we'll go one, two, and we'll make the wall here instead. So we'll get rid of this, um, we'll get rid of this, and the walls are doing this now. So is that, no, that's now too short, so one, two. Is that too short again? Two, four, six, eight, ten. No, that's perfect now. So we put a wall in there. Oh, T-shaped wall here. Another wall here. Another wall here. A return. Another wall. And another T-shaped wall here. Um, in fact, yeah, let's go... 
Let's go another one high, shall we? I don't see why not. So we'll make this the actual end block. So we'll open this up. These are another set of cells. These are another set of cells here. We'll keep it too wide. So we'll make the actual end there. Put some more walls in. Uh, that's not going to be wide enough, is it? Nope. I'm going to delete that wall. Go up one more. T-shaped. Down. Down. Yeah, I like this. I like this idea because now I can actually make this a proper walkthrough into the yard. So I can fence this area off here. So I can fence this area here. So this area, like that, is going to be another yard.